So hello everyone. Um, yeah, it's a strange Facebook live. Life is life is a bit difficult. Everyone is live at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, happy uh, May Day for everyone. Um, a big salute to all the people who works in the front line: cleaners, ambulance drivers, nurses care workers, doctors, delivery people, migrant workers, people who transport essential things, shopkeepers, public transport workers, all those people who work in the vulnerable positions in the difficult times that we are living. A big salute for all the people. Happy May Day for everyone. <coughs> Um, I mean, it's very difficult to talk about my own practice. It's I always like to. Um, English is not my mother tongue. My mother tongue is Malayalam, and I also studied Malayalam mediums in schooling and so on. If some mistakes happen in my language, please forgive me. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you ask me, what are my mediums i would answer like body space and time are my basic mediums but what i'm saying body it's not just an individual body which itself consists of millions of organisms inside and Scapes outside, which is carrying meanings, identities, and so on. Sometimes it's a social body, sometimes it's a collective body, so on. And this body's relationship to other bodies, for example, uh, what is the relationship with, with my body to a cow body or a chicken? or a pig and you know these analogies and space i'm not just talking about physical space but also mental space public space which i'm very much interested i will tell you why in in the coming or uh, later also the border concepts of space and time I'm very much interested in the ideas of Rin Manning's time to spaces and space to times. And also, while I'm talking about time, it's not, for me, time is not a linear one. And time is not differentiated from space, or that's why I'm very much interested in this ideas of time to spaces and space time so on. I'm very much interested in the politics of food and alternative modes of archiving. Our bodies itself is a, a carriages of like many meanings and meaningless and meanings and underlings and so on. And it's all itself is a archive. And how to archive these bodies and memories. These are the questions I, I always facing uh, throughout my practice uh, and whenever my uh, whenever it, it, it's my practice is evolving around these ideas. I hope it's making sense now <laughs> what I'm saying or I'm too much. <laughs> so um, I can't really differentiate my life from my practice. So maybe I should tell a little bit about my childhood. I born and grew up in a very remote village in Kerala. That's in Kannur district. And I mean, we have to walk two kilometers for them to, to get the nearest the best station and also the school 
and the nearest railway station was 60 kilometer away. And that, that's what I'm saying about remoteness. And my parents were rubber toppers. Maybe some of you guys know what is rubber topping. Um, the natural rubber, I mean, my parents, my father would woke up um, around two o'clock in the morning and put his headlight on and go and walk one, nearly one kilometer and start uh, each tree he was starting, you know, this topping. So very slowly this rubber milk will come and, and it will take hours and hours. And rubber topping is a one day kind of 12 hours kind of a job. It's a full day uh, uh, kind of job. And he was working um, in plantations like uh, uh, labor like in other people's big plantations and my mom would join uh, early morning around six o'clock with him with the breakfast and she will also uh, help him and uh, by two or three they will come back and then um, uh, yeah so and evening my father has to uh, go back again for the processing of the rubber sheet so which will i mean later you will get this rubber sheets which can send in, uh, to tires or whatever rubber tires. and i uh, i was studying um, in malayalam medium as i said uh, in a uh, catholic missionary school and I studied till uh, 10th standard and I was good, uh, good at studying. Um, and at the same time, I was uh, um, good at drawing, um, you know, but drawing and all, drawing, sculpting, all those things are considered as extracurricular activities. Never uh, the main subject or like nowadays the fine arts or, you know, this, this focus was not or at least that consideration was never there so even though i was good at drawing and all it was uh, always considered as a you know uh, extracurricular uh, activity so obviously after 10th uh, it was a funny moment <laughs> after 10th standard i, I mean uh, after you you learn english uh, for 10 years and after the 10 years you you learn uh, uh, question tax in eight, eight standard you learn this uh, abcd in, uh, in the second standard you know but after the 10th standard you will realize oh my god a language for 10 years and you can't speak write and express your ideas or emotions through that language you don't know that language so that was quite uh, interesting me when I entered this plus two science course because it was English medium. Suddenly I faced this English medium, you know. And then after the plus two, you know, uh, I was like, at that time I was like, um, I was uh, more interested in political cartooning and I was a political cartoon <laughs> in my other life. And uh, um, I was also interested in journalism. So I was thinking, oh my God, okay. Journalism is the thing. So I can change the world with the journalism. So let's study journalism. So, and uh, after the plus two, I joined um, uh, to study Bachelor of English Literature and Journalism, but journalism was my main focus. But unfortunately, um, my family's financial situation was not great. Stopped education at that time, and then I moved to I I, I for some magazines, and I was uh, uh, drawing for um, different cultural magazines. I was also involving in political activism, and yeah, we have also started some small regional cultural uh, uh, movements and also with my thinking together partners we started a small magazine and so on but you know you can't survive with the political cartoon or something so i was doing different kinds of jobs as uh, even uh, involving in uh, sand mining in the river 
and there's also um, sometimes selling this products cheap products by door to door uh, so on and then as um, as many uh, malayalis i went to uh, gulf as a migrant labor maybe one of the youngest uh, uh, gulf returnee uh, i worked as a uh, migrant labor for two years in kingdom of bahrain it was not a good time uh, it was interesting to experience when i now when i'm looking back my passport was with this kind of the sponsor and you know this very vulnerable regions but when i came back i i i studied 3d animation and 2d animation i started working as an animator later i was working in a, in it so on and so forth but all those time i was excited and interested in contemporary art and i was also excited like this is my my thing i mean i i mean internet was a super freedom uh, you know how to move the mouse and all uh, i was asked to uh, draw some cartoons for a, a web magazine that time so then probably i tried to move this <laughs> using this they playing these games and then uh you know so that's how i i took control of the mouse and but in what trying to say is that internet was a super freedom and then i was like oh wow a lot of uh, um contemporary art practices are going on which we didn't have the opportunity to experience we have to tell one more thing uh, back in um after the there was nobody was there to tell me like after the 10th or 11th there is a art school fine arts fine art school you go and join there and study focus on your artists nobody was there so that was also i'm um, like talking about the remoteness but we started with may day um, but i grew up with a uh, uh, book like this this is um, in malayalam vairuddha dishtita baudhika vadam marx engels lenin Uh, dialectical materialism by Marx, Engels, Lenin. Uh, this book, old, I can show you. So here you can see this is printed and published in, sorry, from Moscow, USSR. And you can see. I was still amazed by the by the printing quality and all. So I grew up with this kind of viewers are <laughs> in the books. Uh, yeah. So what I was trying to say. Yeah, so I was I was just talking about my personal biography. I always going back and forth uh, in in my practice. Also, I always uh, going back and 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 excavate and try to understand. For example, rubber. My parents were rubber tappers, so it's connected to my childhood. But it's really interesting to see. It's a knowledge. It's a knowledge from um, South America, and this looted knowledge through it's connected to the narrative of colonization. So later, late, late, later part, British took this rubber knowledge from this is an indigenous knowledge. So this indigenous knowledge, they, they took it from there and tried to plant uh, botanical gardens in UK and Singapore, Malay, and through Ceylon, the Sri Lanka, it came to Kerala. And this route and my personal biographies with this and the Bega story of um, forced migration of plants. um and uh, bigger picture of biopolitics is curious about that and uh, i mean my uh, late works some of the works i started to use rubber and i'm screening on the rubber and a lot of narratives and a um, lot of medium and uh, I'm, i'm looking uh, and try to explore uh, so these are the, the connections so my um, for example unlearning 
letter from my father in 2018 um, for a Asia archive was waiting uh, um, in Serendipity Festival in 2018. So I, in that, I collaborated with my father. Um, uh, he, in, in a book, he was showing how to top the rubber, uh, how to produce a quality uh, rubber. So it's kind of a, um, you know, so it's kind of an unlearning for me in a, in another uh, very, very much connected to my practice. And I was so, so happy, and I was so proud to collaborate with my father. So yeah, the, the, the main support. Yeah, okay, so I'm sorry, I, I'm, I haven't really prepared for the talk. I'm just, just very casually. Uh, you can also ask any questions in between. And so public space, I told, I told in the beginning, public space is uh, a very interesting thing for me. And this is maybe one of the reasons I started as a performance artist and I made a performance art. So um, doing a lot of this works in all in 2012, there was a uh, very interesting thing happened in Kerala. In 2012, there was this Kochi Musiris Biennale. And initially, it faced a lot of uh, controversies and all. But with the help of hundreds of youngsters who curiously waiting for to experience contemporary art in first hand, it happened. I was at the young um, the 2012 first edition of Kochi Mistress. It was kind of a university for me. Different mediums and uh, different art to use their, um, you know, their approaches, uh, uh, thinking process, think, thinking through the visuals, and everything was really, really an uh, exploration for me. I was working as a assistant for. Uh, Malayalam division, but my that was just a position, that kind of thing. But I was very interested to uh, learn from uh, and with these amazing artists from around the globe. So it really, it really helped me open up my many perceptions. And of course, I have to mention uh, Boss Krishna Majari was really good mentor for me and uh, one of the thing I always remember him, uh, he was always uh, saying, asking me to become, uh, you have to be very curious. And I'm still keeping that, uh, you know, the curiosity towards the, and I was, I was so open uh, to ask people if I find a, a and I will I will ask how what what are you thinking and I will I will show my thinking process also my drawings my works and then ask them to come. To. Um, so that's how I and also of course uh, books I have to tell uh, I have to mention um, reading so I obviously follow these books and read read about the performance art what is body. Um, what is space? Um, what is the new studies, philosophical and political studies of space and time? Um, so, what is performance? So, all of this thinking coming from my own body experience while I'm carrying my black Dalit body in public spaces in India. I have faced many, many uh, bad experiences in public spaces, especially railway stations airports, um, yeah, and so on. And all, after all of this, like many, many experiences, I was even got arrested. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, I was many, 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 like when, when you stand up in the queue in a, in an airport uh, for the scene, many of us uh, have seen uh, these situations with me. 
And you know, while looking at the skin skip, while looking at my skin color, while looking at me, this person can't really, really understand or can, can a situation where like, how come you are here? Like, like, why are you here? This kind of, you know, this, that moments were, I mean, very interesting for me. All of these experiences while I'm carrying the body in public was asking me, me many questions. Maybe that's one of the reason I, I was interested in performance art with the body. What is it? What is this problem? What is this tension? So it is the Brahmanical knowledge production, which is like the um, other day, one of my friend was telling me, um, you no, know, the friend was telling in the uh, one of the chat, everything, everything, all social relationship, each aspect of, of South Asia is colored by caste. And that is based on the Brahmanical knowledge production, whether we know or not. So these are the, yeah, maybe that's the, the main thing. Then, then I will start reading and developing about and yeah, so on. Memories that carries body and so on. Maybe I have to tell now, uh, but uh, a particular work that I have done uh, um, in 2007. I don't really remember which year is this. Maybe but some of you know this work called Caspital. I'm a bit nervous. My internet is a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. One second. Just opening a page and uh, then we can continue. Goodness, my internet is very, very slow. So anyway, um, so I got an invitation to participate in a um, called Spectators of uh, Communism. Rax Media, I'm very thankful for Rax Media, Rax Media to invite me. Um, and and in, when I get this invitation, really thinking about like, what, what is this connection? I mean, I grew up with this left literatures published from Moscow and Indian Communist parties and all those things are very, really so on, but caste, in front of the caste, everyone failed in India. Religions failed, uh, communism failed, socialism failed, everything failed in front of the caste. So I was just reading, um, you know, in this book, in the 82 page, uh, page 8 and number 82, almost without exception, the left movement in India philosophically, systematically neglected caste. And I was also re reading some texts from Marx. He was writing uh, about a little bit about caste in India, which some of the, <laughs> yeah, anyway. So caste and capital connected that caste capital. That was the name uh, um, for that performance. And then I will start reading about um, Poigail Yohanan. 
he was a caste slave from kerala and he was kind of a prophet he started a new religion for caste in kerala maybe some of you know about this book modernity of slavery by dr p sanal mohan he is also a very good mentor of me and my practice i mean i can i can uh, uh, the detail of this book and, and um, all those information if you want uh, i can share all of the information and if you don't Oh, no, Johan, and please uh, have a look uh, um, uh, the history. And he was um, trying to like he was he tried to he understood in the name of archival there is no return of slaves in Kerala, even though it was brutal. So he started, uh, and there was this story like um, in the field, our grandparents were killed as cows, and they were to make this field. And Poigil Kumaradevan or Poigil Poigil Yohanan um, start singing the songs about this this painful memory. Where he, in a in a moment, he find out this skeletons or or the hello. So I got some some technical my internet problem. I think. A lot of people using internet. Moment. So I also I haven't seen the messages that coming in the side box. So Prabhagar was asking me about um, my performance in uh, India Art Fair last year, and uh, yeah, and uh, th th this was a concept I was thinking a lot um, for a long time. Because I mean, Indian art world. Look, look at the Indian art world. Indian art world is really a casteist um, based art world, and it's 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 an accumulated social and political wealth. It's really connected to the history of um, Brahmanism and its narratives. After, like, I have very, very uh, difficult relationship with the post-colonial theorists and uh, teachings that was so popular among Indian artists, Indian artists, uh, curators, and so on. I'm very critical to um, this post-colonial theories, which is really, you know, Almost in a funny way, sometimes saying caste is a British construct. Before British caste was not there, and all of these people <laughs> writing uh, with proudly with their Brahmin caste names, you know, from Spivak Chakravarti to whatever extent Chakravartis. And there was no um, such a big, like after. Like after independence, this much years happened, and uh, I was looking at the like this nation building time and uh, um, you know modernize modernization or uh, the so called construct called the colonial construct called India and the formation and the time and and this mega narrative of Gandhi in in, in Indian artists and Indian uh, art. Um, Art enthusiasts, theorists, philosophers, was you know. One second, Edwin asking me a question. He says, "And I have one question: This digital socio-economic era. Can you tell us about your practices, especially performance art on digital era?" 
Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I will um, I will try to uh, um, answer that question um, after I tell uh, like I'm, I'm trying to answer Prabhagar's question now then I will come to Edwin um, Prabhagar was asking about the um, my work in India after last year um, no during, so before last year. so in in this mega narrative um, in you you look at the uh, schools like from the girl school to bombay school whatever extent school it is always this uh, this colonial construct that india and this nation state building up and uh, as now we know who is gandhi who was gandhi he was the casteist and uh, uh, racist uh, um, and his idea of india was this hindu nation state which is really based on um uh, caste based uh, uh, mega narrative of uh, of this uh, you know this brahmanical uh, um, political system but indian art was very proudly uh, um, drawing indian artists were drawing about uh, gandhi and uh, i don't know what extent it was really interesting and also it was interesting to like this binary talk about okay british colonialism was the only colonization happened in india come on sorry there was an internal colonizer before the british came here so if that internal colonizer i'm not ready to read your post colonial theories which is really a binary attempt so this reflected indian art world and everything 